All right, Shalom. This is Har One by Yasha Allah of the GMS Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kal Halayim, La Yahawa, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Harakakwadash, Mama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. And Shalom to you, Akim and Akwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Um, this is a continuation of the lesson on 2 Maccabees chapter 6. Going into 2 Maccabees 7, dealing with um, proving that Esau is the devil. All right, stemming from their roots, going all the way back to Edom and Esau, you know, Genesis 25, all the way up to um, Alexander the Creep and um, his Edomite cronies that broke off to the four winds, spoken of in Daniel 8 and uh, 1 Maccabees. And uh, we're going to the persecution uh, that they put on the children of Israel, of which in this this age that we're in now, uh, a reflection of that same type of persecution is about to come upon two thirds of our people. All right. Now, um, it happened then and it happened in 70 AD. It happened in 586 and it's about to happen again. So I'm going to get into it. This is 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 12. <clears throat> now this persecution came upon the children of Israel in 168 BC uh, upon Antiochus Epiphanes IV, his arrival back to um, Jerusalem from, from his uh, attack on Egypt. All right. Now... But the thing is, that was um that's that time period happened to be a memorial to our to our people of how the Lord um, do it make a difference between these heathens and his people. All right, and two thirds the wicked and um, the elect of his people, the anointed. Now, Second Maccabees chapter six verse twelve. Now I beseech the beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities right when you read this it's not set up to discourage you if anything it should encourage you and give you um, confidence and faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that he can deliver us and um, and to understand why these things are coming upon the earth is judgment judgment upon the wicked the mystery of iniquity is being revealed Esau you know and uh, we look back on these stories and it tells us who the wicked is. They say the wicked covered the faces of the judges thereof. They did that with their iconoclasm. It says um, Esau, for what you did against your brother Jacob when we fell in Babylon. And Esau was right there. They burned down that temple then. All right. Around 585, 584 BC. A little bit after um, we were taken into captivity in 586. <laughs> so now it says, um, so when we read these, it says, blessed is he that readeth and he that heareth the words of this prophecy because the time is at hand. What time? The time of Jacob's trouble where Esau is about to rush in as a flood. But the Lord lifted up a standard against Antiochus Um and against um who was that man? What was his guy's name, man? Uh right, his name was uh Nicanor. And he was set up um he was a Jake that was set up by um Antiochus Epiphanes to go to war against um Judas Maccabees and um it, and he was destroyed and lost the battle. All right, and the Lord the children of Israel that were at that time prayed and the Lord protected us. But when our people start selling out and getting weak and being wicked and, and falling into the temptation of the threats of death and his idolatry, then um, and eating pork and swine, then that's when the Lord allowed the heathen to come in and do what they wanted to our people. And you people that's not, you of Yahweh's people that are not listening today, the Lord going to allow that same judgment to come upon you. They were boiling our people. Making them eat eat their own scalp, cutting scalping you and making you eat it. If you didn't eat it, they'll boil you. 
You know what I mean? Cut your limbs off and shit. Like they did in slavery. That shows that they're the devil, man. They are the deceiver, the, the wicked nation upon this earth. All right, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, Caucasians. Uh, of which uh, the wicked root came, which is also Antiochus Epiphanes, spoken of in First Maccabees. All right, so it says, Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for th these calamities, right? Because this judgment is for the wicked. But that they judge those pr punishments not to be for the destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. All right. And actually, um, let me get the scripture real quick. This is Romans 11 and 11. And this is Paul speaking. And he said, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Right. So the children of Israel, we stumbled. Uh, but it wasn't for our fall. We were cut off, but the Lord didn't do away with us completely. It says, Romans 11 and 1, I say then, have Yahweh cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahweh have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah? Um... How he maketh intercession for um, to Yahweh against Israel, saying, um, "Let me skip down." Matter of fact, so it says now, uh, verse eleven. I say, then have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid! But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles and as much as I am apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify in my office, right? By the children of Israel falling and being scattered amongst the heathen and the Lord wakes up his elect in those places, he's able to bring back in the rest of the Gentiles, the Israelites scattered um, amongst the heathen. All right. That says, um, verse 12, Now I beseech those that read this book, 2 Maccabees 6 and 12, Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge their punishments not to be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. See, and the Lord what? This is Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For when for whom Yahweh loveth, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai loveth, meaning putting you in order, or care about you, he chasteneth. All right, who he orders, he, he chasteneth me, correct you. And hardeneth our soul as good soldiers. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father have not, uh, father chasteneth not? But see, he even chastened Yahweh shy. It says, But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So that's what Esau is, a bastard. They're not being chastised according to his scriptures, according to Yahweh's word and his laws and order and love. Esau is growing as a wild field, you know, like that seven-year uh, uh, land Sabbath. That seven years of completion, you cut it down and move to the next one. That's what Esau, uh, that's the most high doing to Esau, this, this age. After it's completed, it's um, in the end of Esau's world. The Lord going to trim them down. You know, once their weakness, wickedness has reached to a full and a time limit and end, the Lord going to bring it down. But the Lord said, what? The, those who he corrected, like he did with us, he corrected us as sons, man. You know, allowed us to be persecuted and corrected our spirit, made us, making us perfect in the end process. 
delivering the hopeful elect and giving them new bodies, putting a new heart in their spirit, in their bodies. Giving us this word, <clears throat> guidance. Now verse 13. For it is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but forwith punished. For not as, see, it's good, that's, that's the Lord's uh, goodness when he punishes you early. All right. But he set Esau up to be judged in the last days in, in, in this judgment. It says, for not as with other nations, see, like Esau, the heathen nations, whom Yahweh by Shemia was shy, patiently forbear, right? Um, patiently be forbear to punish till they become to the fullness of their sins. So deal of he with us, man. So the Lord deal with us in chastisement and he let Esau grow wild upon the earth and wickedness increase until the Lord, uh, the Lord's judgment day and he destroys them. This is Psalm 7 and 11. It says, Yahweh judges the righteous and Yahweh is angry with the wicked every day. See, long suffering. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He have bent his bow and made it ready. He have also prepared. See, everything's prepared for that judgment day for Esau. He got everything prepared for his judgment. He also prepared for him the instruments of death, the missiles. ICBM missiles. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. You know? All right, this is Second uh, Peter's. Three and um seven, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, um, it says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store. See, by the same word that that kept that that flooded the earth before and brought us out of Egypt, the same word of Yahweh, His command. That same word is the one that's bringing the judgment now. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of, of, of ungodly men. And that's what the Lord said. Esau is going into perdition, right? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us words, see? Is long suffering the wicked. All right. And chastising and building us up, preparing us, the hopeful elect. Not willing that any should perish, the 144,000 and the one third, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. Okay, here we go. This is a um, Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and I will cleave unto him through believing in the truth and to the word. All right. And joining into the work. And depart not away. Don't put down the plow. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end, man. You're going to be increased in knowledge, be increased in um, understanding, be increased in your work, be increased in faith. And ultimately, ultimately, the Lord will raise you up and give you spiritual abilities, man, and a new body and nations under your feet to set things back in righteous order under our true king, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shah. All right, our Messiah. Um, it says, cleave unto him and depart not away, 
that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. For gold is tried in the furnace of in fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, man. So the same way gold is purged in fire is the same way a man's spirit is tried, you know, and being accepted to Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, in adversity. This is uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 16. And therefore he never withdraw of his mercy from us. And though he punish with adversity, yet do he never forsake his people. But let this that he that we say that's a cut on you damn people that believe he coming to save the whole world. No, he and that he pushing John three sixteen. John three sixteen means cosmos, which represents the church of Israel that called out from the world of Israel. All right, the Israelites. Now it says, um, yet do if he never forsake his people, but let this that we, um. Uh, we have spoken be for a warning unto us. And now will we come to the declaring of the matter in a few words. So now I'm going to um, just a mindset. This is um, Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus say, if you will stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. See, that's what we're supposed to do today. And the ways is talking about uh, uh, all the ways of the world and see and ask for the old paths instead, the old, the, the righteous way. There's only one way, you know, go out to the highways and byways and, and, and search for the men of the Lord that's teaching his word. Go on the Internet, search for the men that's teaching his word. Dig through the scriptures for the truth. All right. And see and ask for the old paths. Right. The scriptures say that eyes shall see that teaches. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. All right. It says, um, where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. And that's what two thirds are saying today. And that's what the wicked of our people were saying at that time. All right. The bandit mites and Judites. <clears throat> they got boiled in pots, man. Verse 17, also I set watchmen over the, over you, all right? That's why we have elders, we have uh, heads of camps, you have um, just lead, leaders in this truth, man, all right? That's watching. Um, also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet, but they said, we will not hearken, right? And they said, uh, watchmen watch over your soul, man, the elders. Verse 18, therefore hear ye nations and know, see we know by what? Through reading the scriptures, the ways of old, seeing what happened in the past, how the Most High dealt with the nations and how he, he uh, dealt with us. If it wasn't written, we wouldn't know unless the Most High wanted us to. It says, hear O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. And that happened in 586, but also it's going to happen again today. Even the fruit of their thoughts. So all their plans, all their their hopes is going to fail in the society if it's not according to your how about Shem Yahushua's will. If you're not hoping for the kingdom, then all your hopes going to fail. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. So by rejecting this truth, the Lord going to reject you. To what purpose come there to me? Oh, Salaki, that was the point. Romans 15 and 4 For whatsoever things were written aforetime Were written for our learning That we through patience I mean a long suffering Endurance of, this, of these wicked people And trying to, trying to um, Stay separated wholly From this world And comfort of the scriptures Might have hope man So the comfort of these scriptures We have hope Comfort of the world You're, you're being led to slaughter you're going to be uh, uh, condemned, confounded in that day. Let down, bamboozled, hoodwinked, ran amok. All right. 
This is 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. And it says, um, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. And that judgment seat is coming. You know, this, this is it. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. And you better pray that uh, you be you be looked at it in a good way in that day by doing the works, presenting your body as a living sacrifice. All right, instead of being led by senses, your senses and being sensual beasts. Verse eleven, and being deceived. Um, eleven, knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh. See the terror. How do we know? Through reading, through study. The reading, the reading of the word, man. All right, looking into the book. It says, "Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh by Shimei Shai, we persuade men." All right, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. All right, so now, um, I'm gonna read verse 17 again. It says. Second Maccabees 6 and 17. So, you know, this goes along with knowing the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men. So let's get into it. The terror that the Lord brought upon our people for not listening. But let this that we are, uh, have spoken be for a warning unto us. And now will we come to the declaring of the matter in a few words. Eleazar, he was an Israelite at that time. And he was known for fighting against the elephants and sliding up under them and cutting their bellies, the elephants of Antiochus, you know, and um, bringing down that branch of their army. Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well favored countenance, so he was aged, you know, he probably in his 80s and 90s, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. All right, and this against. Our laws to eat swine's flesh, and our people love it today. And and you see what it's doing to their health: you get diabetes, high blood pressure, gout, all kind of different shit, man. All right, because pigs sweat on the um, the inside; they don't sweat on the outside. And uh, the, the the Levitical um, the law tells you about it, man. All right, the scriptures tell you not to eat swine's flesh, and uh, um, if it doesn't chew the cud. And have clothing foot. Or if you have a clothing foot, but it doesn't chew the cud, then you can't eat it. All right, chewing the cud is having a second stomach that uh, be able to digest the food twice. They regurgitate it, then they uh, um, filter it again, so so it, um, the food can digest. You know what I mean? The pro uh, so anyway, uh, let me get to stick to the point. So pigs are very unhealthy. Just they're the, the um, bottom feeders of the earth, just like Esau. Verse nineteen. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously, than to live stained with such an abomination, spit, spit it forth, and came of his own accord to the torment. Man, so he spit that damn pork out of his mouth, and came with his own accord. To be put to death Alright he had no fear man Just like Braveheart um, And that's what we're coming to A time of temptation man Where they're going to Try to um, Get people to take that chip And the death And the temptation Is going to be powerful man This is a judgment You know No food You see what's happening in Venezuela People killing each other It's dark all right, and they're gonna they're gonna say, they're gonna have a quick fix, which is gonna be the chip in America, cashless society. And if you take it, and if you sell out to the system and start, what if it ain't nothing to eat? You pick up some pork and eat it. You know, but you got to trust your how about Shimei Shah, man. The way Elijah did, and the ravens brought him some uh, some food. All right. Um. No. All right, now it says, um, verse 20, as it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful 
for love of life to be tasted, right? So um, this guy, Eleazar, he was aged and he looked around. And he was like, man, I didn't seen so much. I didn't seen the persecution of our people. I remember back when things were uh, better. And he was like, you know what? I don't want to be here no more anyway. And that's, how, that's the spirit we should be in. That's what the Lord said. Set a mark upon the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst of us. And this time the Lord said, touch not my anointed. And he's going to lift up a standard, man, for the ones that are praying and sighing and crying and that are aged in this truth, growing in this truth. All right. Now it says, um, it says, as it behooved them to, uh, as it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. All right, so they they didn't love their life more than uh you know uh, uh the laws the love of Yahweh. All right, so the ones that were willing to sell it out, sell out, they love life, they love this, they love breathing and and enjoying the splendors of this matrix more than serving the Creator. All right, and Yahweh told us we're not supposed to. Um, matter of fact, let me get this. Matthew's ten and twenty-eight, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I Meaning, right here on the earth, put you in the hellish condition like we were in under under Antiochus Epiphanes. And we're under today in America as this place is crumbling. And you got puppet rulers and dictators in position. All right. Now, verse 2 Maccabees 6 and 21. But they that had the charge of the wicked feast, and that was a wicked feast, eating swine. So that's wickedness. I'll let you know it right there, man. For the old acquaintance they had with the men, taking him aside, with the man talking about Eleazar, all right, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So they was like, yo, just take, just go eat some chicken or something. Make it look like you ate some pork, Eleazar, because everybody respected him for being the elder. And it's, so that's why I say what? This is First Timothy 4 and 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So we're supposed to be an example of the believers. All right, and that's what he was. He was an example. Revelations 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And that happened um, 2,000 years ago. All right, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. And this is what he's telling us today, to be faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. All right. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death, man. So the ones that didn't sell out 2,000 years ago, they're back here today uh, being guided until the end, and they won't be hurt of that second death. They won't be hurt this time. All right. The Lord said he's going to protect his hopeful elect. Yahweh Ratazah. You know, just for a side note, you will have some martyrs, but that would be their destiny. All right, Second Maccabees six and twenty-one. But they that had the charge of the wicked feast, for the old acquaintance that had uh, that they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, meaning like some other type of food that was lawful, such as was lawful for him to use. And make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king, right? And that that would have 
brought down the um, morale of our people that was still trying to be faithful. And that's why Yahweh Shai didn't sell out. And he, he was um, hung on the cross. I had to be a, a testimony and the standard and foundation of uh, faith, of confidence in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai to not fear death. All right. Or fear of man, you know. And it says, um, uh, where was that? Verse 22. That in so doing, he might be delivered from death. See? And they, they were saying he would be delivered from death if he was just act like it. Like he ate some pit pork. And for the old friendship with them, with them find favor. Talking about his uh, Hellenized friends. All right, Israelites that sold out and became pe paganized. They were like, yo, just eat the pork, man. We don't want to see you die. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like Kanye. Verse 23. But he began to consider discreetly and as became his age and the excellency of his ancient years. I Meaning he started thinking about when he was younger, man, and how he grew up in the truth. All right. And the people that believe. And the honor. Um. All right, scripture say, remember thy first love, man. All right. And the honor of his gray head, see, he was honorable. He was elder. Whereon was come, and his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by Yahweh. Therefore he answered accordingly and willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. He like, it'll just kill me. For it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to dissemble. So it don't matter about your age. Whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar being four score years old and ten, so he was 90 years old, were not gone to a strange religion. So he, he was saying that he, he didn't want the, the younger people to think that um the elders were getting weak and that our people should sell out and fear Antiochus. Instead, they had a promise of what? Reincarnation. That they were going to live again upon this earth. And they knew about reincarnation. In, in chapter 7, it speaks about it. All right. And they knew that they were going to be on this earth again. And they're back here today. Set up for salvation. All right. Verse 25. Um, and so they, they through mind hypocrisy and desire to live a little time. And that's all it is living about 70 or to a hundred years. That's a little time, man, to sell out in that little time man, upon the earth instead of doing the father's will. And a moment longer should be deceived by me. That's why you can't, you can't take the chip. And I get a stain to mine old age and make it abominable. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, see, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive or dead. Sheesh. All right, man. So the Lord will punish you right here on the earth. And your spirit here judge you and put you, send you back to the earth to live out your judgment. Verse 25. Wherefore, now, and they knew about the spirit, you know, being alive. And the Greeks didn't believe in that. Wherefore, now manfully, manfully, man, he said, gird up thy loins as a man, show thyself as men. Changing this life, I will show myself such as one as mine age requireth. All right. And leave a notable example. And, it's, and he did leave it, man. It's written in the scriptures. To such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and, the, and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. All right. So it's, it's it's better to go into the house of mourning, to the house of mirth, man, and to and to suffer for good than to suffer for uh, wickedness, man. 
All right. To die in your house, in the in your house, shy, your house, by your house, shy. To die in the truth, present thy body as a living sacrifice. Twenty nine. They that led him, changing the good will they bear him, a little before into the into hatred. So all his friends that were paganized be turned against him quick, and turned to hatred. And demons jumped on them people, them Jakes, them Israelites. And they started hating uh, the ones that believe, and that's what's gonna happen today. Everybody that hate the men of the Lord, you know, of our people that hate us. It says, um, they that led him changing the good will, they bear him a little time, a little before into hatred. Because the foresaid speeches pro proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. So before they were being kind to him, they were just being desperate, trying to get him to uh, uh, sell out so everybody else could sell out and become paganized. So they was using trickery and witchcraft, being deceitful, demons, uh, devils. 30. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, it is man manifest unto Yahweh that have Yahweh Shemel Shai that have the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten, but in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation, even unto today. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh. See, his soul is in the hand of Yahweh, the righteous man, Eleazar. And there, and there shall no torment touch them, man. Meaning their spirit. All right. And in that these last days, and in the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. So on earth they seem to die, but their spirit is safe, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. All right? That's our hope today, man, to be immortal. You know, even if we die in this truth that we'll, we'll be um, risen up in that day, given new bodies and live, for t live forever. And, and that our spirit never dies anyway. So what, do, what should we fear, man? It's, it's not possible. Well, we back here again today. He kept his word. All right, Yahweh kept his word, man. Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And even gave us the comforter and the prophecies as proof. This is uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Therefore, thou therefore, my son, be strong in grace, in the grace that is in Yahweh Shai, my Shayak, me, and being in the truth. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others, right? To teach others also about the virtue and faith and courage, you know, of our great leaders in this truth and the spirit of truth. It says, Thou endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai, man. All right, soldier means what? Solitude. All right, sojourner, a soldier. All right. So we soldiers here sent out to do the will of Yahweh Bashim El Shai, in which he hardens us, uh, hardens our heart against this world, which causes what? Separation. Holiness to be set apart. He said, I hardened your heart, your forehead against, your forehead against their forehead. All right. Now it says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. And that's what Eleazar was fighting, the spiritual battle. And he knew that if he sold out, 
he would cause all our people to sell out. Instead, he became a prison of war, spiritual prison of war, meaning he didn't, he, I mean, he kept resisting all the way to the end. All right. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a, a soldier. All right, and that's what we're doing. And if any man strive for masteries, yet he, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. It's Matthew six and twenty four. Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that cross represents the adversity, man. All right, and walking the path and doing his work and bearing the afflictions that Yahweh Shai had to bear and all the righteous had to bear, you know. Verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. All right, so if you cast off your worldly ways, cast off this life, and, and, and just do the Lord's will And you gotta work to eat And things like that Be a father if you're a father Be a son to your parents Take care of them Things like that um, Husband to your wife If you have one If not uh, But the best thing to do In this time Is to do the father's will man You can't lose by doing that Alright I'm talking about all the way around For It says and, and be willing to die if they uh, threaten to put you to death to sell out or to, or to be wicked. Or, um, you know, if they say uh, you're going to suffer, you're going to starve in the famine or you're going to be put in prison and things like that if you don't get the chip, then, um, you know, you got to have faith in that day. And these stories help give you that confidence and that faith. It says, verse 26, for what is a man profited if he gain, if he shall gain the whole world? Not just a little bit of the world, not just a little bit, a couple more days living like Eleazar was saying. But even if he was to gain this whole world like Floyd Mayweather, right, and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then shall he reward every man according to his works man so it's about your works and that's the true reward that's going to last forever not this temp temporary reward that you can get from Esau when they just um that's like how shall I say to Esau hey man um build me a car and Esau ah I could build it, it ain't nothing I could build a whole city he like what did the Lord say well but you got you to use your own clay. Then Esau will be stuck because they'll realize that they don't have anything. All this belongs to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So you'll be a fool and deceived to believe that Esau is really giving you some type of reward or that this current world can give you some type of uh, reward. Only thing it can do is please your senses. That's it. The, and the flesh is weak and wicked. All right. And it destroy your flesh, even destroy the spirit. All right, I'm going to end it with this. This is Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh. See, but through the uh, terrors of the Lord, we persuade men. Hopefully, if you're listening to this, you're fully persuaded or increased in you being persuaded by the spirit. Um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service, man. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. All right, and by us doing the work of Yahweh Shemel Shai, we're proving His will and raising us up again.